In this video, I'm just showing you a real dialed down, lightweight bug out bag, or whatever you want to call it. Survival bag, there's a million different names for it. Starts off here with the um, Helicon Tex Ghost. Great bag, very lightweight, super tough. Love it. I'm going to show you what, it's, what I put in it. My goal is always to go for about 10% of my body weight if possible. So I weigh 180 pounds. So you're looking at 18 pounds. So if I can get around 18 pounds, I feel great. So I'll show you what I've got in it. Okay, so this is my sleep system for this kit. We're looking for something to sleep under, something to sleep in, something to sleep on. So the under in this case is a US military issue poncho. It's ripstop nylon. These are my favorite. Something to sleep in. It's the US military issue poncho liner. It's called a Wooby. What I do on mine is I go and get um, zippers, okay? Joanne Fabrics, YKK zippers. I go ahead and cut and then stitch in the zipper. So that, no, that, that way I've got a place now to pop my head out so I can line the, the poncho, right? The rain poncho. And this becomes a piece of insulated clothing to keep my core temperature beautiful. This is a <clears throat> Bivy by Snug Pack. This is an English company. Very great, great products. Um, they work a lot with the special forces in England. Love it. So this is just in case, you know, even though it's 85, 90 degrees and it's only getting down in the 60s, it doesn't stop the rain, right? If there's a monsoon, storm comes in, boom, you got problems. So this is just an added layer of protection. You could take this, I'll put it all together, make the little burrito and you can get inside here. You can also use these as browse beds. Stuff them full of um, soft, plantage, even cardboard, newspaper, whatever you can find, keep you up off the ground, stop that conduction. I mean, if I had to, I would. This is a Gore-Tex. I'm not really into um, putting anything that may penetrate it, because then it's ruined. This comes in a stuff sack. If you know me, I hate stuff sacks. Right? I take all my stuff out, I don't, I don't like them. But anything that could get wet, like this bivy bag, it needs its own stuff sack so it doesn't contaminate the rest. I'll put this together and show you what I do. I'm always going to have um, socks. Socks are crucial. So what I'm wearing currently are just these little halfies. It's a company called Bombas. I don't know anything about them, but I love them. They're real cushy. So I got two pairs of those and then a nice pair of 100% um, merino smart wool socks. Because even though it's, again, hot during the day, not too cold at night, that jump can make you feel real cold. When it's 90 degrees and then boom, drops down to 60, you can be cold. I don't like being cold, so I'm going to bring a pair of merino wool socks. 100% US military. Merino wool or just wool, I don't know. Watch cap. Keep that head warm. Myself, bald. Got to keep the noggin warm, right? And then I've got my um, Shamog. This is a military sniper's veil, 100% cotton. And what I'll do with this is I'll just make a little pillow. Here. And it's very soft. It's nothing like a pillow. Lastly, headlamp. This is part of the sleep system because if you need to see something, you're asleep, you want to be able to see. So I keep my headlamp either, usually not on me, but I'll keep it right next to me. That way I can see if I need to get up to go to the bathroom or if there's a critter out there. Very important to me. Peace of mind. Security. This is just a little Duracell. These are what I love. You can pick them up for $19.99 at Home Depot. It's also got um, a red light function. Love these. They've always worked for me. I've been using them for 15 years, probably more. They're tough. So that's basically my sleep system, plus the clothing that I have on. Right, I'm going to get in this little um, burrito. In the military, they're called Ranger Rolls. Snuggle up, and there you go. Probably not even going to be sleeping, but... If you needed to sleep, 
There you go. This will keep you going. So the way you make the burrito, again, in the military, a lot of people call it ranger roll. It's been called a lot of things. But basically, you have your um, military ripstop poncho. Then you have your wooby or your poncho liner. The wooby comes with these little um, canyons, right, or these little strings that are attached to it. When you buy them, always make sure, check these. Make sure they're good. Then on the um, military ripstop poncho, it's got grommets on it. Anyway, these all come inside, and all you're going to do is a simple um, tie. You're going to attach them all up. What I do is just put it through, and then just make a little um, hitch. Right, a little slip knot. There you go. So you go all around and secure it up. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we got her all tied up. You can see there, just a simple little um, slip knot through the grommet. And then what's awesome is since I've sewn in the zipper, now I have a place to pop my head out. So it's rain gear, it's your um, Basically your sleeping system, sleeping blanket. And now I can easily wear the rain poncho with the liner, the wooby. I can use this as my rain gear, obviously. And I'm insulated. It's warm. So you wear this all over camp. Beautiful. Okay, let's talk about water. Water crucial. We need water. I love this system here. It's called Grail. I've got a video. I'll try and link it up here. Beautiful system. You basically take this unit, dip it into your water source. What I like to do is um, have a bandana. So as I dip this into the water, I'll cover the mouth with the bandana so I'm pre-filtering it so no debris gets in here making the filter last longer. You fill it up, you set it down, the unit then squishes down and disinfects the water as you're pushing it down, 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 down. And there you go. Water. Beautiful unit. I think they're coming in now at a hundred dollars. They've exploded in popularity but they're just so simple because if you're moving, you know, I'm gonna show you here with the Sawyer Mini or any of the Life Straw, you know, you find a water source and you get down and you gotta get down on your knees, get down low, get prone. And that's pretty much all you're getting and then you gotta go. With this, you can come, boom, boom, boom. Scoop it up, screw it, go. You're gone. Next up, this is my Pathfinder. And the reason I love this one because it's got this wide mouth. So Canterbury, when he designed these, was extremely smart. I love the wide mouth. It's great for cooking in and so many things you can do with the wide mouth versus a lot of the clean canteens that I've had and others have just that small little mouth. Great design, Canterbury. I don't know if you can still get these, but if you can find one, love them. So I'm gonna have this. And one thing you can do with the Grail, scoop it up, Go through the process, disinfect that water, pour it in here, fill up the Pathfinder or your stainless steel bottle. Now you got this one full, scoop this one again. So now you got two. Okay, depending on what kind of environment you're in, whether it's permissive or non permissive, meaning are you playing hide and go seek or is it, you know, a Grateful Dead concert? Peace and love. Basically, permissible, like I said, Grateful Dead, peace and love, everything's fun, normal. Non-permissible means you're being hunted or there's a natural disaster or there's a war and you want to hide, okay? So, the reason I'm saying that is because can you have a fire? Because the fire is the biggest giveaway of all. You can see it, you can smell it. That's the problem. All that smoke, the smell, you're leaving trace. If somebody wants to find you, it's gonna be real easy. But if you can't have a fire, here's the nesting cup. It comes with, or you can get any of these, but it's just a stainless steel nesting cup. You can build your fire, gather the dirty water, place this on the fire, put the lid over it, let it come to a roaring boil. 
I usually let it come to a roaring boil and leave it for a minute. Good to go. There you go. You can disinfect your water using your little canteen cup. What I like to do is take the bandana, put it in the nesting cup. There we go. Next option, which I love, is any product by Sawyer. So this is the Sawyer Mini. It comes with a little straw. It comes with its own bag, but I got this one. It's a little bit bigger. Basically, all you do is, um, there's many ways to use this, but it's got a female here. Take the male of whatever you're going to connect it to. Little water bottles work great. The lightweight plastic ones, you can scrunch them down to nothing. Just make sure you test it to make sure that they fit this female. Right, the male to the female, because some of them don't fit. Anyway, basically, you'd find your water source. Fill this up. Screw this on top. Remove the straw. It's even got a big arrow telling you which way to pull from. And there you go. You got water. Super lightweight. I believe these last for longer than we'll be alive. That's how many times you can use these. Anything by Sawyer's, bulletproof. Great products. Next up, Aquatabs. Love these. These are in everything I have. I've got them stuck in pockets everywhere. You know, I'll go to grab something. I think I'm going to find some change or something in my pocket. And I'm at dinner and I pull out aqua tabs. It's a sickness, but they'll save your life. This can disinfect water. You have to um, do the measurements if you want. But basically what I do is, here we go. Say about 32 ounces. Drop in the, what they recommend, the one or two tablets, shake it up, let it sit for an hour while you're moving, it's in your bag. Hour later, open it up, agua. It probably doesn't smell too good or taste too good, but it's disinfected, it's all you care about. This is a multi-purpose item. This is iodine tincture, right? 2%. Now this can be used on your wounds. It's a great, great, you know, one of the oldest wound treatments in the world. It's got a little dropper. And it can also be used to disinfect water. You have to go online, check with um, whatever source you trust, and see how many drops it is exactly per how much water you have. You basically fill up the dirty water, and then add the drops, boom, 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 boom. Maybe a couple more boom, boom, booms, right? Just to be safe. Let it sit again for however long they recommend. I let it sit for like an hour. Again, it's gonna smell and taste horrible, but it's gonna keep you alive. So that's just um, my water system. So on this kind of a kit, I'm bringing the Grail, the Pathfinder stainless steel, the nesting cup, and the Aqua Tabs. So we've got three ways to get water. All right, so let's talk about clothing. Okay, clothing is your shelter also. It's very crucial. Again, we're talking about warm weather. I'm talking 85 degrees, lows in the 60s, so it's gonna be hot. You're gonna have what you have on your body first. So on the pant, I love these um, basically ripstop nylon. They're called zip-offs. So here, there's a zipper built in, and you can zip it off turning them into shorts, which is what I have on now. So I love these, they weigh nothing, they're super cool, and they're great. Somehow they block the wind, I don't know. I've been wearing them for 15, 20 years, love them. Extra pair of underwear, in case there's any surprises. Again, my socks, so I've always got three pairs of socks. Right now it's hot, warm weather environment. So I've got the two halfies and again, the merino wool, smart wool. Shades crucial. So I've got a boonie cap, so some sort of a cap. Boonie cap, baseball cap, whatever you want. Block that sun. Shamog or sniper's veil. You know, I wear this all the time for shade. Scarf. Remember, it's gonna be hot. 
clothing. I'm also going to always have my 100% um, wool patrol cap because it gets cold at night. Here I've just got a standard um, desert camo, U.S. military issue top. And here's just a BDU military issue. That's about it for clothing when it's hot for me. I mean, the reality is when it's real hot, even this would be coming off, right? When it's 85, 90 and you're moving, a lot of times where I'm at, I'm in the forest and it's basically a rainforest. So it's very humid, very hot. So this stuff's all coming off. Too hot. I don't like it. I don't want to be sweating like a pig. So here's where we get into the redundancies. Things have multi-purpose. Here's our wooby and our rain poncho. This is part of your clothing, right? It's part of your shelter. The wooby, since I split it and cut the hole in it, it's a beautiful just throw over. Keep you real warm. The rain gear is right here, your military rain poncho. It also blocks the wind. So everything has dual purposes, right? You always want to be thinking of what else can it be good for? But the wooby and the rain poncho, that's part of my clothing. That's about it. I like to always keep my medical kit in the little red medical first aid bag. Any kind of red. Red signals medical universally. Because it's not just about you. It's about if you get hurt and somebody comes upon you, they can go through your kit. Boom. Rip out your red medical kit. Very important. First step. Gorilla tape. I use this for bandages. It's the ultimate band-aid. I recommend Gorilla brand because it's sticky, sticky, sticky. So you can take this, wrap it around a big lighter. You can also get the mini rolls or just create your own little roll of it. This is what I use for band-aids or to, there's a million uses for this. Iodine teacher, tincture, 2%. So you get a wound, dit, 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 put this in there. It'll start helping to heal it. Gorilla glue. You get a cut, liquid stitches. So first you'd um, irrigate it, clean it the best you can. You've got your iodine tincture, apply that. Super glue it. You could even come over again with a little bit of duct tape bandage. Super glue, great tool. Big one I recommend to everybody, Ambisol Extra Strength or Aurigel Extra Strength, whatever brand you like. This is for a broken tooth or a toothache. That's torture. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, you know, what are you going to do? You, there's nothing to do. If you know natural remedies, you know, good luck finding it wherever you're at. Right here. Put that on. Numb the pain. Tampons. These are 100% cotton. Are they totally sterile? I don't know. But they're beautiful. You can fluff them up, put it on a wound, pack a wound. Not so great little um, tinder, fire starters. Hand sanitizer, trying to stay as clean as possible. Do your best. Aqua tabs again, water is part of your medical kit because being dehydrated is, that'll kill you quicker than anything. Aqua tabs and your water kit that you have, but we keep these in here, tiny. Emergency, these are great. Now I don't fill up an entire glass of water and mix it. I make a little tiny shot, done. Big good energy booster. Tourniquet, lifesaver. Whether it's for you or for somebody else, somebody gets shot, somebody gets wounded somehow, they need this tourniquet, you don't have it. You can start improvising with things, and but if you have this and you're trained on, on the kind of tourniquet that you own, lifesaver. Always carry a tourniquet, or two, or three. Nasal pharyngeal airway, you need to be trained on how to do this, but basically you're someone that's not breathing. Nasal pharyngeal airway, this has the lube in it, up the nostril, keep them alive, keep them breathing until you can get to help. Little pair of scissors, nail clippers, tweezers, you don't want hangnails, you don't want splinters, good to have. I'm a smoker, cigarettes. My medical kit, I always keep nicoderm patches. One you may not be able to smoke depending on what kind of 
situation you're in. Cigarette smoke, right? You can smell it, you can see it. So, I like to keep these. I don't want to have a nick fit because you don't want stress if you're in a stressful situation. Anything you can do to eliminate stress. Which brings me to my little um, pill bottle full of medicines. Basically in here I've got Imodium AD. You don't want diarrhea. Dehydration is going to kill you the quickest. I've got aspirin. I've got Tylenol. I've got nighttime NyQuil. I've got Pepto-Bismol. A variety of things, but the biggest are aspirin, Imodium AD, painkillers. Very important. Headlamp. This is part of your medical because if you, if it's dark and you need to administer aid to someone else or yourself, you don't want to be tying up your hand with a flashlight, you know. No. This goes on. Now you've got full, clear vision. You've got use of both of your hands. Headlamp. Cotton shamog, bandana, sniper's veil, whatever it is. This is 100% cotton. Is it sterile? No. You know, could you put it in and boil water and sterilize it? Kind of. But what's great about these, the extra size shamogs and sniper's veils, is you can take them, someone gets a wounded arm, which is what happens a lot. You know, you try and brace yourself, you slip, you fall, whether it's you or someone else. So we're just going to make a simple square knot, create a sling out of this. Right over left, twist. Left over right, twist. That's a square knot. And this could go over, the injured arm can come out, you can adjust this. Now you've got a sling. Great for yourself, great for somebody else. A million uses for this. But the oversize is what makes it great for slings and such. Another thing I always carry, I'll carry multiple of them, I'll have them hidden in pockets and whatnot, are the bags that you get at the fruit and vegetable section of your grocery store. Amazingly, these will hold water, so they're great for multiple things, but just good to have bags, plastic bags. So this is just a super stripped down basic medical kit. Obviously, every human has different needs. Are you a diabetic? Are you on blood pressure medication? It's endless. No one knows. It, it's, it's what's going to fit you. This is what fits me. All right, let's talk about food. Food is a very personal thing. What do you like to eat? You've also got medical needs. So what you eat for food, what I eat for food, it could be, it's going to be totally different. My main thing with food is that I don't want to cook anything. It's got to be ready to eat right now. No cooking, no adding water, ready to eat. So a big one for me has always been these... Um, Starkist tuna and chicken creations. They're like a buck each. Good to go. Rip them open. Got a little plastic spoon. Done. Cheese sticks. These are just little mozzarellas. Ready? Rip them up. Good to go. Peanut butter. I've heard about people surviving off peanut butter for a long, long time. It's the miracle food. So I get these little packets of um, Justin's honey peanut butter. They're 99 cents each. Excellent. Protein bars. These are a brand that I love, Pure Protein. It's 20 grams of protein, 200 calories. Now again, it's hot, so you're gonna have to be sure they're protected, unless you're gonna you know, have a little melted mess, but love these. Gummies. These are little kids, Mott's gummies. Get some vitamins in you. Love to have a couple packs of those. This is a big one. This is a company called SOS Food Lab. This is made in the United States, I believe down in Florida. These are um, individual rations. They look like this, and they taste incredible. They taste like a honey rice crispy graham cracker treat. Love them. These are used all over the world in natural disasters. They're given out by the organization, so they're proven to work lifesavers. Then of course you've got water. Water is food. So you've got your grail, keep you hydrated, that's what's important. Again, your food is going to be totally up to you. My only thing I recommend is that it's ready to eat. No adding water, no cooking. Right now. Alright, cutting tools. Your knife is your best friend, literally. 
This is the Ontario Knives Rat 7. This thing's an axe. I've had it for literally probably about almost 10 years now. Batons through anything like butter. You can use it like a machete. Great, great tool. Here I've got my Mora knife Garberg. This is full tang. You can baton through stuff also with this. It's razor sharp. Love this knife. This is a little Mora knife companion, or some call it the Mora knife basic, depending. These are like $11.99, bulletproof. It's not full tang, but it takes a beating. Had this again for probably 10 years. Beautiful knife. Comes with a little plastic sheath. So this would go as my backup on my belt. And then I'm gonna choose between either the Rat 7 or the um, Mora Gerberg, just depending on how I feel. They weigh almost the same. This has got a lot more girth, but this is sharper. Gotta make a choice. Then here, depending again, are you going to a Grateful Dead, Peace and Love, permissible place? Or are you going to a place where you're hiding? That's going to determine whether or not you make a fire. If you want to make a fire, it's great to have a saw. And of course, this is the Boko Laplander. Classic, classic. Bulletproof. So, if I'm going to be making fires and I know it's permissible, I'm going to have this with me. If not, then what do I need a saw for? You know, if it was a real desperate emergency, you just pick up twigs and you're going to be making a little tiny fire. So with cutting tools, my main requirement is just that it's full tang. My main knife, full tang, meaning that the entire piece of steel runs all the way through the handle. It's just one big slab of steel, full tang, because then you can abuse it. That's about it. You pick your poison. But remember, your knife is your best friend. All right, your fire kit. Again, this totally depends. Are you in a place where you can make a fire? Maybe you're not. I'm still gonna have these on me at all times. These are Bic lighters. I always have three Bic lighters at minimum. And split them up. Don't put them all in one pocket. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? Put one here, maybe one in your pant pocket, and one in the backpack. Just don't keep them all together in one place. Always have three Bic lighters. Ferrocerium rod, ultimate fire starting tool. Doesn't need batteries, gas, doesn't matter if it gets wet. Good to go. Definitely get at least a six incher, and I always get a half inch thick. Rack some um, Gorilla Brand duct tape around the back. You're good to go. Beautiful, beautiful tool. Next up, these are Uko Storm Matches. Uko, great brand. Love to have these on me. This is a waterproof little case they come in. Uko. As far as getting the fire going, wet fire is a great product. These are just little, you know, infused tabs. Probably got gas in them or something. Good. My go-to has always been just um, Vaseline infused cotton balls. Gorilla Brand duct tape again. This stuff is a great flame extender because once it catches, so say you were to take, you know, a Bic lighter and light it up, it catches, the stuff burns like wildfire. And it burns for a while. So use your Gorilla Tape. Great flame extender. Your hand sanitizer. This is a great accelerant. Okay? It's just basically 70% alcohol. Squirt this on whatever you're trying to get going. It's going to give you a little boost. Great accelerant. Magnifying glass. Great tool. You got sun. It's free. You're not depleting anything. Set it up. Get that ember going. Maybe make a bird's nest. You know, play with it. But a magnifying glass. Free. So fire, one of the most powerful tools in the world. Ever since we were cavemen, millions of years ago, fire's everything. It enables you to cook the meat, enables you to gather the water, bring it to a boil, disinfect it, keeps critters away, gives you security because you can see, you're safe, keeps your body core temperature warm, it's, it's everything. Fire to man is the ultimate, it's God, right? That's it. Fire is crucial. The question is, can you have a fire where you're at? Permissible versus non-permissible. That's going to be up to the situation you're in. But this is the kind of thing I would bring always. And it starts off with the three big lighters, ferrocerium rod, uco matches, magnifying glass, Vaseline-infused cotton balls. Fire is important. 
toiletries. Now, if this is just going to be a quick one, you may not even need this, but you got to have it on you. Toilet paper, wet wipes. What I do is I just break down the wet wipes and get these little plastic bags, stick them in here so you can take three or four of them. Your teeth. Your teeth are crucial. Good oral hygiene. So you're going to want to have a toothbrush and some toothpaste. That's about it. It's going to be real quick, right? If you're out there for 24 or 48 hours, maybe you'll use the bathroom. Wet wipes are your best friend because they're beautiful after you go to the bathroom and you can also use them to clean yourself. Love wet wipes. And for the girls, you're going to want to bring your feminine products. But basically that's it. Toilet paper, wet wipes, and uh, a toothbrush. You're good to go. Communications. Communications are crucial. Intel. It's all about Intel. It's all about Intel. So I'm always going to have a little radio on me. This is just a little Baofeng UV5R with the um, extended antenna. So that way I can get, really I'm just listening. That's pretty much it. I'm listening for information. So I may have NOAA on the weather channel. If something goes down, it's going to be broadcasting over one of these. Binoculars, right? Crucial. Intel. What's going on out there? I don't want to have to go up there when I can look from here, right? 500 feet away and find out what's going on. Binoculars, crucial. This is a little um, night vision binocular. It's by Carson. Great little tool. Definitely pick one of these up. The company's called Carson. You can see it's about, fits in the palm of my hand. Takes um, AA batteries. Beautiful little tool. It's a little monocular. At night, you can see. Great to have, Intel. A watch. This is just an old school Casio Digital. It's got a little compass on it as a backup. I don't wear watches in my life, but if I'm out on, you know, training, something like this, I'm going to wear a watch because I may need to sync with people. Know what time it is, stopwatches, etc. So watch is good. This is just a little dry bag. Keep this in. And then finally, your compass. This is communications. Okay? This lets me know where I'm going. And obviously I'm going to have a map of the area. Or maybe I'm making maps of the area. So this is how I'm going to navigate. Right? I'm shooting azimuths. I'm moving around. So your compass is crucial. That's my basics for communication. Alright, let's put the puzzle together. First thing, my sniper's veil. It's going on me. Wooby. This is why I don't like stuff sacks. I like to just squish things in. It takes up a lot of dead space. When you have a stuff sack, it's just like a little hard rock. I don't like it. So I got my wooby, underwear, my socks. Here's the bivy. My lighters, of course, my Bix. So I'm gonna hide one of these in here. And I'll put um, one in my pocket here, and maybe I'll hide one up here in this pocket, say. So I just like to have them split up. I do have a couple compartments in here, so I've got my Ukos, fire starter. I've already got some food in here, so I just continue adding the food. My grail. Go on the side here. sure it's tight. What I did have that's missing are little extenders. So you definitely want to have the um, shot cord, right? Little bungees that come over the top of these lips, right? They attach to the laser cut molly here and it's a little bungee comes over shot cord. I don't know where they went. Here's one. They look like this. So I would take this off, attach it here so that way it's pulling. Keep pressure on that because you don't want to lose it while you're running around. Let's see what's next. So my knife, my ferrocerium rod lives in here. That's going to be on my belt, on my person. So that would be here. Got my jacket. It's just a desert BDU. Never know, you might need it at night, you know, if it gets a little cool. What else? 
the main goal of showing you this, this is just a real quick, you know, rundown. I've already got my toiletries and my paper and toilet paper and whatnot. It's, you know, stuck in these little pockets. Anyway, the biggest thing really is just to show you that what you always want on top is your rain gear. You want to be able to get to that ASAP. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one.